Oh, hey guys. In today's video, I thought I would spend a little time talking about some of the gear we use. Uh, got a few questions, so we're going to talk about that today. Uh, the gear that we've been assembling and testing out uh, for the upcoming season and even into next season. So that's going to be the topic of today's video. So hang around. So this segment of the video is going to be talking about our camp kitchen. We've had a couple of questions about that, what we take to prepare our meals, especially if that we hope to do some camping along the way, and it actually helps cut back quite a bit on cost. Eating out at restaurants, as you know, can be expensive. Uh, plus, you're also limited to uh, you know, what they have to offer and portions. So we're going to see if we can save a little bit of money and do a lot of our own meal prep when we're on the road. So this is our kitchen. Now. I've got a little bit of a background in carrying cooking gear and in a small confined space. As a backpacker, of course, you're limited to a lot less than what we have here. Typically, it was a small stove, a small bowl, and a combination fork-spoon combination, commonly known to known to as a spork. Uh, we're not quite that light today. Uh, also, my background is doing a lot of camping with my airplanes in my earlier days, my younger days when I was flying quite a bit. A lot of nights under the wings of an airplane, a lot of good memories, a lot of good travels. My biggest one was out to the southwest uh, in my Cessna 182 back in the early 90s. That was an absolute hoot. Um, quite a few nights uh, camping throughout the southwest. We would rent a car, threw everything in there, and was able to travel throughout the area and camp via the car and the airplane. Now, contrary to popular belief, airplanes are not as big as cars. Um, the weight capacity of an airplane is quite limited, considering we also got to carry our regular gear uh, in ourselves. So uh, we had to shrink it down quite a bit. So this is sort of an evolution or an upstep from that, uh, from the years gone by. So I'm going to cover those not items now and we choose to keep everything in one kitchen in one bag so it's just easier to access the first item this is relatively new to my kit uh, it is my AeroPress coffee maker Miriam started taking me after we uh, started dating to a local little breakfast shop down at the oceanfront where we typically spend quite a few Saturday mornings uh, and they serve higher-end coffee and they also don't serve any type of sweetener. It's sort of an eclectic restaurant where the food should be uh, enjoyed in its natural state. So I got to enjoy good quality coffee um, without any sweetener in it. Now, before that, I would always drink coffee that was sweetened with a, a Splenda type product uh, just because I wanted my coffee sweeter. But that's because I was drinking gas station coffee, convenience store coffee, and cheap coffee. But once I started to get into uh, uh, better coffees, uh, I decided that I want to make my own. Even instant. Yeah, it'll do in a pinch nowadays, but uh, I prefer to make my own with the press. And we'll get into that in a little bit more detail later. To be able to make coffee, you need a stove. And this is the stove. Now, it may not seem like it's that big, but this is my uh, MSR brand uh, fuel stove. To power the stove, we use this uh, propane uh, cartridge. You can pick these up at most any outdoor store to include Walmart uh, and many places similar to that. You simply screw the stove into your fuel cartridge, tighten it down, control valve, light a match to it, and you have a stove. And with that stove, we carry, if I can get it out, some cooking utensils. Uh, this is my little pan collection. It is two little pans in one. And in here I keep, uh, for those of you with military experience, you know what a P38 can opener is. I keep one of those on a string so I won't lose it. In case you run across a can of food you need to open, you have to open it up somehow. little stirring spoon, little pot holder, a couple little... Uh, towels or napkins if you would fire up the stove put your pot on there prepare if you're boiling water to make coffee 
uh, or if you're preparing your meal and you have two of these. And I also keep a, a small scrubby in there and it also helps as, as a sound dampener so the pans don't rattle around when they're put together. Try to keep all of that nice and neatly stored in this little mesh pouch. We also carry a little non-stick frying pan that uh, comes in handy if you want to prepare some eggs or bacon or anything that you need a frying pan for. So we have that. Very lightweight, made of aluminum. And if I just want to heat water for coffee or I'm just heating up some coffee, our, our coffee cups also double as small pots we could put on the stove to heat up our coffee. We have two of these. One fits inside the other one. Makes for easy packing. To actually consume the food, we have two of these plastic bowls. Don't put these on the stove. They'll melt, if not burn them actually. And they're easy to clean. Uh, heavy, they're pretty heavy duty. Uh, I think they're a... Uh, uh, I can't think of the name of the plastic that they're made out of. But uh, they're really durable, easy to keep clean. And we can consume some meals uh, in these. If we want to have snacks on a plate or use a plate, we have these small plastic plates. Non-breakable, and that way... We won't break them so we have those available you never know when you're gonna need a cutting board I always carry a general purpose pocket knife I don't have that with me because it stays in a, uh, a little red bag which is sort of my man purse that's where my pocket knife stays because generally there's not room on my riding pants for the pocket knife but anyway we carry a small cutting board uh, you never know when you're gonna need to cut some cheese or cut some vegetables or, or prepare something so you, you, cutting board comes in handy carry a small bandana to use as a dish towel and I carry a small assortment of utensils um, small spatula the detachable and foldable handle for the frying pan and two regular spoons two regular forks and a, a, and a, a butter knife in case we want to butter some bread or something and a small set of tongs for putting things or on or off the uh, uh, fires we need to now you may notice that one stove may not necessarily be enough for uh, two people to prepare uh, a meal uh, in the field so to supplement that we are planning on getting another one of these uh, for Miriam uh, before she heads out on the trip with us but in addition to that, we also have this item. It is actually a small folding wood burning stove. Pick this up on Amazon. Comes in a little carrying case. Very easy to set up. Very easy to set up. You just it unfolds like an accordion. The inside folds down, and you have a small stove that you can feed the fuel in here and you also have a ash container or ash catcher that you slide in and there and then you have a little grate on top if you just want to use it as a grill to cook some meat on directly or some vegetables that sets right up on top of there and I picked up also I saw somebody online doing this on YouTube it's a stainless steel uh, bellows for building a stove you don't want to we all know that you can increase the fire or get it going better by blowing onto the fire but you got to get your face down really close and it causes mustache to sins that sort of thing so amazon really cheap stainless steel bellows you can actually blow into it this way or actually blow into it this way and into the wood stove and get the uh arrow to the fire to get it going better uh this is handy this actually burns it's also referred to as a stick stove so you can take uh, small pieces of wood that you can cut up or break up and just stick in here. It makes uh, for a nice extra stove if you want to grill some steaks or something like that. Now, speaking of firewood, you need a way to cut some firewood. So I went ahead and got uh, a small folding saw from uh, got it on Amazon. Relatively inexpensive, pretty effective. I've already tested it out. And it's good for cutting down firewood and, and small sticks and things like that to uh, feed into the stove. So that's that. So now I want to demonstrate how the AeroPress coffee maker actually works. Pretty simple. If 
Remove the lid. It comes with a little container for your coffee filters. Comes with a coffee cup. Measuring spoon. And a little stir. You pull the plunger out. Not all the way out, but you uh, set it upright. Add your coffee. Then you add the water up to the mark on the side of the uh, container from your pot of boiling water. It's poured in there. And with this, you can stir it to make sure all your coffee grounds are saturated. And then you wait for the amount of time that you need for the way you want your coffee brewed. Sometimes 30 seconds, sometimes up to three minutes. Uh, and then you take one of the filters, insert the filter into the top. Put the little top on that has, uh, it's perforated for the coffee to go through. Turn it upside down. And you have yourself a, a nice cup of French press coffee. And uh, I used this a couple times already. Pretty good coffee. It also depends on the brand of coffee you use. We're going to be using the same coffee that we drink at home. So uh, we make sure we have consistency in our quality. So that's pretty much our kitchen. We did not go over the consumables because they change from trip to trip. Now we do plan on carrying a small cooler with us to carry some perishable items. Uh, I think generally we probably won't stock up more than a day or two's worth of food at a time. Uh, get off the motorcycle a couple times during the trip during the day. Probably buy some food for that afternoon. Now we're also probably going to be carrying a lot of, not a lot, but some freeze-dried meals with us. Uh, in the event we have some adverse weather. Uh, or we're not able to find something that we want for dinner, we have the option of having the freeze-dried meals. We're going to have a couple of dinner entrees, a couple of lunch entrees, and uh, a couple of breakfast entrees where you just add boiling water or open a can and keep it pretty simple as opposed to preparing a meal. But when we're traveling, we want to eat well, so we may be doing some light meal preparation, grilling some meat, cooking some meat, some eggs, some things of that nature, some vegetables. Uh, and if Miriam has her way, a lot of salads. So, But we'll see. So if you have any comments or questions about our kitchen gear, uh, please let us know. And obviously you can customize this for whatever works for you and your own personal needs. Uh, for years, I was able to go with just uh, eating some freeze-dried food and instant coffee. That worked for me. But as I got older, I decided... You know, I want to enjoy life a little bit more, so uh, add some creature comforts, so we're going to be preparing some, uh, some higher quality food. Well guys, we're going to wrap up today's video. Uh, just a housekeeping note. We make a point to read every comment on the channel. I go into the system at least twice a week, at the absolute minimum, and respond to comments. Um, and I noticed there's an interesting problem with the comments section. The notification will say I'll have nine or plus comments, but when I open the comments section, there's like one or two. And this week, I opened the comments section and found an obscene plethora of messages I have never seen or even responded to. So I apologize for that, but apparently it's something that YouTube has been doing. Some other channels have been reporting that uh, they've lost control of their comments altogether. But if it's something you have a burning question of uh, for us, please shoot it to us as a, uh, as a message on our Facebook, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. We check that uh, also on a regular basis. Apparently, it's a little bit more reliable than the comments in YouTube. But don't let that stop you from leaving some comments, because we enjoy those. So, anyway, uh, until next time, guys, uh, as always... If you like this video and you think others might be interested in it, please share it. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and ring that little bell there for some notifications. And uh, if you like it, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give us a thumbs down. We don't take it personally. So, until next time, y'all take care. Bye-bye.